Now, I'm not going to try to, I'm not trying to make an excuse, and this might sound like one. I, I'm honestly not. Two teams lost games today, right? The Chiefs and the Niners. Yeah. In a vacuum, Andy's loss was bad. He had, he was the heavy favorite. I think that has to be in recent memory in the last like couple decades in the AFC championship or NFC championship game. One of the biggest upsets. The number honestly could have been bigger. It felt like the number, like how's this only seven? Shouldn't it be like nine or 10? I know they had beat him a couple weeks ago, but they were heavy favorite and they blew the game. They shit down their leg. They fell apart. Mahomes was terrible. The end of the first half. It was, was awful. It was an embarrassment. It was bad. Ultimately, I don't think like Kyle embarrassed himself. Like he just he lost the game. So I I guess what I'm saying is like if you rank the losses today, it feels like the Chiefs is way worse than the Niners. And I, it's, it's the best loss of the day when you consider <laughs> the two games that got played. Is that what you're saying? Good point. Best loss of the day. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like it's yeah. I guess I do. when I'm trying to put the season, it it's it's hot. Like everyone, you know, this is not people. I, I can't even imagine if they won the 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 enjoyment that people would have had. I mean, their marina would be going nuts. Fucking sack would be going. This would be fucking dick. So far, would be going nuts. Yeah, it's just that was to me. The two losses did feel a little bit different. Obviously, it was a gut punch. It's a gut punch because you had the lead with a chance to go to the Super Bowl, right? Well, you were 17, thir- 17 14 basically midway through the fourth quarter. Yeah. To me, if you were 17-7 with like seven minutes left and you had to punt and they had to go like 80 just to make it a one-score game, that would have been like, that to me is the the shit that he takes for the Super Bowl. Like you lose, you're in control of the Super Bowl. This did not feel nearly as bad of a loss. Like in a vacuum, obviously the Super Bowl is a bigger game, but you know what I'm saying? I think part of it was it felt early. Like when you watch the Chiefs game early, they were kicking the Bengals' ass. Destroying them. Early in the Niner game, it's like, uh, they're pretty lucky this thing's 0-0. They're pretty lucky this thing's 7 Well, we looked at each other. We're like, how's it only 0-0? Enormous win for the Niners. How do the Niners have the lead at halftime? Enormous win for the Niners. But one thing that was different this week, right, than week 18, and this, I, 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 they clearly have a strategy, right? They defer. And they get the ball after him. Yeah, yeah. It didn't work. Well, even way. Papa was like, oh, he went tails this time. Because, <laughs> I, again, I was on the radio. Wait. No, he went heads this time, right? Usually goes tails. tails. And uh, Tim Ryan's like, I told you there were some wrinkles coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah. Was there a funny line on there? Uh, just uh, yeah, some people talking about the Raiders uh, in the stream, which which we'll get to today. Boy, Raiders really buried the lead, didn't they? <laughs> um, I agree with you. I, I think... You know, if if you're the Bills, the old Bills, like the Marv Levy, Jim Kelly, Thurman Thomas, Daryl Tapp, uh, Andre Reed, uh, how many more Bills can we name? Uh, Bruce Smith. Bruce Smith. Thurman Thomas. Thurman. You drop um, uh, Bill Polian was a GM. Yeah, this is why he's in the Hall of Fame, guys. Not just the Colts. If you're those Daryl Talley. Uh, oh, yeah, I said Daryl Tapp. Yeah, he's a Niners assistant. Daryl Talley. Yeah, yeah Daryl Talley. Who's the little white guy that also played with Favre? Oh, the guy that... Uh, Don Beebe. Don Beebe knocked the ball out of... Uh, Don what? Beebe was Wes Welker before Wes Welker. Not Daryl Tapp. Thank you. <laughs> um, but if you're that team... Daryl Tapp was a wide nine guy. I, well, that's why... See, now it makes sense. We were see, at camp. You're like, there's Daryl Tapp. I'm like, that is not Daryl Talley. You're like, no, it's Daryl Tapp. And I'm yeah. like, does not look like Daryl Talley to me. You're like, yeah, I yeah. know. It's Daryl Tapp. And I'm like, Jim Washburn he guy. played for the Bills. <laughs> and Kasirik is a Jim Washburn guy. So all the wide nine guys are interconnected. So, okay. Finally, keep in mind, John and I had this misunderstanding. Well, I had this misunderstanding in Niner camp this year. And I finally just figured out what it means. You thought anyway, Daryl Talley was uh, the Bills guy? Was on I, the thought, I thought I was looking at Daryl Tapp. And I'm like, that does not look like Daryl Tapp to me. But you convinced me. That's Gerald Tapp. And smaller guy. He's an undersized pass rusher. Uh, Steve Tasker. Good one. Yeah. Anyway, with that team, like they went to three straight Super Bowls and lost. And then when they went to their fourth, it wasn't like, well, you know what? If your worst years are Super Bowl losses, that's cool. Right? Like yeah. you don't say that about them. That aside. Didn't they get beat by a couple last second field goals too? I yeah. Mean, they also had some blowouts. Yeah. Blowouts are easier to take. Thurman Thomas lost his helmet on the sideline. You think a blowout's easier to take? Uh, no. Well, I mean, I always say I'd rather lose like the way the Niners lost than get beat like 30 to 7. And just be like miserable on your couch when it's fucking 25 to nothing. I go back to that alpha quote I read to start the thing. Like, alphas. 
this is like, why do we play? like the competition at the end of the day is part of what you love? Like, yeah, because you, you're not devastated when you get your ass kicked. It's because all game long, you're, you're like, just kind of show. embarrassed. Like you just you yeah. didn't anyway. Well, actually, you didn't do anything because you're just a fan on the couch or talking it just about means it. you got disappointed earlier. Yeah. That's all it means. We did lose three grand a day again. Let's because we, unlike some people, we put our money where our mouth. We, yeah. we we tell you what you we think. created it though. It wasn't like we just three grand out of our pocket. We had earned it. Did I almost screenshot our YouTube video that said the Chiefs should roll the Bengals and tweet that right as the Bengals were driving at the end of the half? Yes. Would that have been my Brittany Mahomes moment? Yes. Did I do it? No. I might have had a tweet out there in the ether last night and after a couple cocktails. That said what? Someone asked something about the game today, and I said like Niners plus three and a half, Chiefs win easy zero percent chance chiefs lose that something like that was yeah. in a tweet yeah in a quoted tweet that was kind of going a lot of people are coming back who day nation i bet i bet old takes exposed was uh we were was, right and throw the some chief, bad body bags we were right and the chiefs blew it for us okay that's how i look at the game but what i'm getting at is with the bills comment the circle back to that is like and we've talked about this with shanahan all year early in the year like your your failure years quote unquote as your career goes on, they can't be, you know, like Sean Payton's failure years aren't five, six wins. Certainly like Mike Tomlin's failure years. If you're going to be 15, 20 years, one of the best coaches in the league, you know, the years you don't win the Super Bowl, you have, you should put yourself in well, position. This was an Andy Reid failure year, right? He was a two seeding loss. Yeah. I mean, I, partly I think he was a failure because I think he had the best, like his team should be in the Super Bowl. Yeah. And I think the Rams, sh- you know, I go back. I think I said really early the Rams should be in the Super Bowl. And then they lost a few games. I was like, oh. But pain, like if you had said Chiefs Rams Super Bowl, I'd go, you know what? I would have liked for the Niners to be there. Hashtag business purposes, because then I'd be there. But um, yeah, you're going to buy Super Bowl tickets. (laughs) Well, yeah. (laughs) What what, what, what happened with that? A pencil? Oh, Um, we would have won some cash today. But Rams Chiefs, like at multiple checkpoints of the season, that would have made sense. This one would have felt like gravy. Uh, but that doesn't change the fact that they were right there. I mean, they they had the lead. You cannot deny that they're going to have to prove that they can win these games. And I think Kyle has proven he's a fantastic coach. That's what I believe about him. Um, you know, I think time will tell. Can he now? The big question: Can he develop a quarterback? But if he does, you know, one of my tasks for this week, maybe for the next pod, is to do some math on combined head coach and quarterback age in the NFC. The premise being, I bet the Niners are pretty young. Head coach, quarterback. What's that? I mean, Stafford's only a couple years younger than McVay, right? And McVay is several years younger than Kyle, right? Yeah. So those two guys, I don't think Russ and uh, Pete are going to make the uh, top five on the list. But, you know, that's going to be the next challenge for him. I thought getting to the NFC Championship this game uh, game this year was was good. But, you know, you still got to – you beat Kyle – you beat Sean six straight times, but McVay won the game in the playoffs. Well, when Brady retired – uh, I saw someone, Biederman, or I, hell, it could have been Jeff Darlington. I don't think it was him, but it was someone that tweeted that Tom Brady played more seasons in the NFL than Trey Lance has been on this earth. <laughs> How did that become about Trey Lance? Because he's going to back Tom up next? Yeah, it, well, it had to be a 49ers, someone with the 49ers. Just kind of putting it in perspective. Just make, like, just, just, yeah, fuck, I played 22 years in the league. Yeah. Well, again, retired. We, you know, we'll see. Yeah. T- Tom Brady Sr. Tom Brady Sr.? I was listening to Seth Wickersham's book on a little drive today. And uh, used to talk a lot. Big talker, insurance salesman. When Tom was drafted at the six round pick, he signed a three year contract. It was $170,000. Money's gone up a lot because yeah. the minimum salary now is like 800 grand. Tom Brady Sr., again, this is 20 years ago. Now, Barry guy said, Tom, you're still not making as much money as me. Tom was making some cash, you know, 20 years ago. I mean, probably. 250, 300 grand, you know, 2000. That's a lot of money. I mean, Tom Sr. was taking him out to, was he a member at I think Olympic the, or I think Olympic the, at I Cal think Club? The family was a member at Olympic. Tom's family, I thought. That's the I, way I but heard I, it. I thought Tom Sr., when Tom Jr. was a kid, yeah, they played was playing Olympics. golf at Olympic. So yeah. Tom Sr. was a member at Olympic. Yeah, but then I, there was the one thing when they were doing the alternate shot and Brady took the putter and like hit the yeah, ground because he yeah. wasn't getting into Olympic. Was, Tom Brady at Olympic. Yeah, wasn't making NFL salary when he was 12. No. Yeah, they were, they were Tom good. Seniors doing yeah. good. Tom well. Seniors a good business. Tom, Tom Junior was still coming back and sleeping in Tom Seniors' house in his old bedroom. I know so. Tom Senior uh, met his wife just doing an insurance uh, door to door. Yeah, I know <laughs> he is a sales guy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So uh, I, I DM'd Wickersham I'm like, you know, the coolest part about your book so far that I'm only into like his rookie year was learning about Tom's dad. Like that was kind of cool. I think the Tom stuff in that book that book's really good. Uh, 
better better safe than sorry uh, uh better to be loved better than to be feared. feared better to be feared better to be feared better yeah. to be feared yeah uh it's a very good book i haven't finished it you know time will tell all yeah. my, my audible live a lot of shit talking about like belichick being like an academic curmudgeon is like kind of the way they describe yeah. him <laughs> uh it's a it's a fantastic book but anyway um what else on the night because kyle you know i think the one way he is described you know and i think sean today was a really really good insight in the two of them just watch him kind of go like i i do think sean can be a little more emotional than kyle i think kyle would tell you i don't know what he said after the game but like his thought process kyle is not even even Andy, like he calls the wrong play sometimes because he gets pass happy. But you watch Andy on the side; he is not up and down. He is not freaking out. Sean's emotions, which is good, but it also gets him in trouble. Like one of Kyle's strengths is he's very very even keel. Like right? he calls wrong plays, but it's not because like oh, just, oh. sometimes Sean gets like that. And, and part of it is just I wonder if Sean will say if if hopefully I don't want him to go away because I think he's great for obviously us and this matchup and this rivalry. Maybe it's just like he's still pretty young. <laughs> you know, we've heard Kyle talk like, you know, when I was assistant coach, I've learned a lot. Like, maybe it helps. You know, Sean was kind of just thrown into this. As a, like, he's, he's fucking our age. Like, I, yeah. I understand. Like, maybe he'll look back when he's 42. It's like I had to calm down a little bit. Yeah. I, I was. He feels like he tightens up a little bit. Yeah, I, I just feel like I, I think not tightened up. I, I think when you're immature is the wrong probably verb or word I'm using here. But I, I think sometimes when you let the emotions get the best of you, you're not thinking straight. And I think sometimes Sean gets so wound up, good and bad, because you see it. He's just like, uh, and you know, he's it's he has a clear coaching advantage. And one, you know, thing that's going to be all week is like this guy came from Sean McVay's staff. Remember, like all the all the haters were like, who are you hiring guys from Sean McVay? Yeah, it's kind of a fucking good idea. Like Kyle, hire Kyle Sean McVay guys. It tends to work. Even Cliff Kingsbury, John about Zach Taylor. Yeah, say yeah. what you want about Cliff Kingsbury. He did win eleven games and go to the playoffs this year, right? I mean, it's not like. He, he ain't Joe Judge. He right. ain't one of Belichick's guys. Like, if you come from the McVay tree, hell, it's pretty good. So, I, you know, one thing that just as time goes on, like, Kyle's personality is pretty set. And he had more reps at it. Like, I, I do think Kyle or Sean's still kind of working through it. I think he's trying to probably calm down a little bit because you have to. When you're the play caller, like, you have to be kind of in control. I think part of what we saw, too, was his their respect for one another? I think we see a lot, but the way that he used those challenges and in a kind of in a desperate fashion was pretty telling. I, I mean, thought the second one it was, was weird ridiculous. because we both thought, God, he's moving the ball well. He's about to get the ball on this fourth down play. They're going to punt to him anyway. Why doesn't he use this challenge on the use check fumble? But he did, and it was crazy, and he lost his timeouts. Luckily for him. You know, his team was able to drive the field anyway and score. Oh, yeah, he challenged the U-check play he didn't even get, right? Yeah, he didn't get it, and then the Niners punted. Yeah, it was dumb. Um, But I think part of that is he's thinking like... Stafford one was dumb, too, just because, like, they don't ever overturn that play, do they? And I know it's easy to be like, well, if you just watch football, well, Sean's at a game every week, so he's not just, like, sitting back watching red zone he, like all of us. I know. But they never overturned that play. Well, his the tough part, too, right, is he's looking at the replay. He thought live it was a bad spot. He's looking at the replay. We're looking at the replay on TV with the first down line and with the line of scrimmage line. It was clear there's not enough evidence there. I don't yeah. know. He, I think he really trusted his eyes on that one. I don't know if he trusted somebody in the booth on the second one, but they were bad. They were bad. And I think that's maybe one of the questions with him going into this game is like, you know, are they going to need to launch a comeback against the Bengals? Luckily for him at that time, they were only down, what, three? So they didn't ultimately need those timeouts, but they, they, they have, um, I think, like the Niners would, a pretty big advantage. The Bengals pass rush. I mean, it's just like you can, I mean, your pass rush against the Bengals. Against the Bengals even shot today, yeah. the Chiefs were getting after his ass. They have more firepower, even the Chiefs. The Chiefs are kind of just one guy, 95, yeah. makes a lot. Like they got like four guys. I mean, they, you know, I, Vaughn didn't really totally notice him today, which is a good thing. I mean, it's a huge having Trent. I would imagine he noticed him a little bit more against some of the Bengals guys. Vaughn Miller has a chance to like a couple Super Bowls. Like it's, he was already, you know, once he won Super Bowl MVP, this is a fucking pretty big – him and Odell. All it know, takes those, is one play in a Super Odell Bowl, Odell Beckham and, and Vaughn Miller are going to be Super Bowl champions? I know. Obviously, Vaughn, Vaughn already is, but Odell. Remember, was like, oh, he should have gone to Green Bay. Well, no, I think it's working out pretty good for him. Yeah. You think those two guys are going to want to stay? Yeah. Or do you think you win a Super Bowl, like if you're those guys, you got to cash your Vaughn, you go get paid one last time? Odell, to me, it'd be pretty, pretty good spot. Plus, they pay. The Rams pay. Yeah, the cap doesn't impact them ever, huh? 
They have unlimited. They have the seven hundred million. These are two cap. teams that don't have first rounders forever. It feels like. Um, Didn't Troy mention that? Yeah. Well, he he was talking about the Rams specifically, but Niners don't have him either, right? Yeah, I mean the Niners don't have one in twenty three either, right? It was yeah. They lost the twenty one. They lost the twenty two. They lost the twenty three. So the, the the pick they're giving up this year is twenty nine. They'll have like seven compensatory picks though when they lose all their assistants. If coaches. I would have told Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch before they made the Trey Lance trade, would you give up pick twenty nine in your two thousand twenty three first round pick? to be leading in the NFC Championship game this year in the second half. What would they have said? Yes. You just made me think of a good topic for this week, too. In a heartbeat, right? Well, I mean, we can get into this later in the week. Do you think but... there were the Rams, I think we kind of talked about it, already validated the Stafford trade coming into this game, just being in this game? Were they validated or did today validate it? Uh, I, well, today validated. I don't know if they were already validated. Validated now with this win. They I mean, have to look, win here, Super Bowl? they're validated in this way. It was clear to me that Matt Stafford made them better and that Matthew Stafford was more than a stat patter before this game got played. Just right. based on the two playoff games or all season? Yeah, well, both. But, I mean, definitely in the postseason. He's been awesome. So, like, if, let's say, Jimmy drives the field at the end of the game and the Niners win, like, Stafford, I thought, played winning football, right? Yes. Even though he had the red zone interception. Well, Josh Allen lost the game last week, and no one blamed Josh Allen. No, I, I think they were valid. You're right. They were, like, they were validated. They did the right thing. Um. Uh, making a note for the topic for later in the week. Well, Stafford going to be a Hall of Famer now? I mean, his stats are going to be... He's going to have a Super Bowl championship? The, it, it, the irony is the Super Bowl is going to pad the stats <laughs> for his... his, high, his uh, That's true. Cooper, Cooperstown? He's not a lot... I would say this, though. Like, the Niners, if they would have made the Super Bowl, there's so many good topics. It would have been, you know, props, who can win Super Bowl MVP. The Niners' Super Bowl MVP would have been hard. Like, you would have been like, oh, Debo's going to be the heavy favorite, but, like, Kittle could have two touchdowns. You know, Bose could have three sacks. Like, it could – the Rams – it's not a lock Stafford is, like, the MVP right in that game. Even if he throws 300 yards. Like, if Cooper Cup could have a 12-catch, 200-yard game, boom, right? Aaron Donald could have two sacks, force a fumble. We saw – I mean, that Von Miller game, he picked it up. He forced a fumble and had a couple sacks. Yeah. Like, you can – feels like Stafford will probably – he should get it. Like, if you just think about how it goes right for them to win that game. But I could see other guys on that team being in the mix. Starting with Joe Burrow, Chase, Jamar Chase. 